all right so trade atm wealth creation formula i'm gonna share what i've been using for a while just to simplify things for myself and keep my mind focused on you know the ultimate goal of each investment or even whatever strategy i use when it comes to you know making money make money of course you know that's my thing right but um across the board you know um i'm gonna build this out and when it comes to the first box you know i would look at that more like a, a daily let me uh put this together all right so the first box uh something that to me uh over time it's been responsible for you know if i'm caught in a snafu with a longer term investment i'm still generally okay because i look at this as like uh daily uh weekly um you know and the mid box or the middle box i would look at this in time frame wise you know like uh monthly uh yearly and when it comes to the third box uh that you know i apply to this amazing formula it makes it real simple complicated of course you can make it more detailed it's just a matter of having a basic understanding uh this i look at like uh you know lifetime or you know like an estate right and if you're so it could also be like retirement right if you're uh if you don't have you know family or uh rest retirement retirement so yeah it could be uh yeah it could be either one make sure i got this right estate you know if you have people to leave money to retirement if it's just you looking at how you're, you know, taking care of yourself. Yeah, it's spelled correct. All right. So um, that that's what I look at, you know, income or, you know, pretty much cash flow here. The first box, I would really like call it almost like cash flow. And uh, whether you're using it from a business standpoint, of course, um, you know, we always talk about uh, even operating yourself like you're a business, you know, even if you're a sole proprietor, just being a business, uh, if you you know become a professional business actually talk to your accountant or your lawyer about the benefits of that but yeah that's something that overall uh trade atm that's that's what it is so the first is cash flow second box you know monthly yearly you know kind of investments um and and it doesn't mean like each the time frame doesn't mean it's like a completed within that time frame uh, it just means that you're looking for you know cash flow within that time frame so if i do I know if I have a business where, let's say, let's look at it like just, you know, trading. If we're trading, right? And we're looking at it in that way. Um, if I do a day trade, right? Or even like a, a short-term swing trade, I'm looking for it to give me my profits within a day or within a week, right? Or within weeks. And so that would put, even trading would be in the first box. Um, if, if I invest in something and it's more like, a, you know, like a something that it could happen in months, you know like one to three months or even you know um one one year or so you know nine months to a year then it would go in the second box if it's something that i'm buying and i'm gonna hold for a, a long term you know we're talking well over a year and, and a half uh not a year and a half over a year and a day so here we're talking like you know daily weekly here we're talking monthly to yearly but the yearly aspect of it really is like uh having something for one year and a day puts it in a different tax uh sit you know situation but things might change so we're not going to go into the nuances of those things it's just at this time having something for a you know you buy a stock and you hold it for a year and a day uh you could talk to your uh, accountant or attorney or you know your financial advisor about that everything i'm doing here is just to share with you an overall thing that i use not saying that you sh should use it or that it even applies to you um it's just what i do so this is not financial advice in that way um but retirement stuff would be like you know i put something into a long-term uh thing and the state or what i look at is like generational wealth uh that would be you know the third box right so just to um get this uh yeah cash flow would go in here and so we could uh, get into the conversation on that. I'm gonna make this like a whole uh, series to put it out so you can kind of see 
um, how things work when it comes to this, right? And that that's what it would be. Like you would literally, you know, we, we focus on what is the ultimate thing? Like, just like we say, if you're gonna trade, you should know getting in, when you're getting out, you know, all of that, right? So you should have those kind of things within the decision making process, right? So if you have a plan, basically you stick to it. And so that's what that would be, right? But now when you look at monthly and yearly, if, if it's not stocks, uh, something like, you know, having, you know, a business. So if you have a business um, and you're working towards generating, you know, you look at your money every month, every year to see the growth progress, you wouldn't look at it like daily. That'd be kind of, um, I mean, and, and you can have systems that look at it daily, but in general, like you would have meetings where you say, okay, look, uh, last month we made a dollar. Uh, next month, our goal is to increase that to $2. Um, and so if you look at and give yourself that time frame of a month, you know, and of course, when you look at a business, there's quarters. So, you know, three months, first quarter, uh, three months, second quarter, three months, third quarter, uh, three months, fourth quarter. And so the same thing would apply. You know, like I said, you, you look at it and you're looking for things that can give you a return on a monthly to yearly basis. But this is more like, you know, the way I look at it with the overall formula is that this is more like active. And in here, I really try to focus, you know, 80, 20 pa passive income, right? So if I could do 80% or eight out of 10 things here um, as a passive income stream, then it allows me the freedom of time to be able to develop uh, projects, develop, even develop myself, right? And so, that's you know how you'd look at it um as far as the the retirement aspect right uh let's look at that so you know i say retirement but it is you know you being able to pass on wealth um if you're passing it on to someone or you just being able to enjoy the fruits of your labor right so for business owners uh you're looking to retire and cash out um that you know you, you kind of see what it is what it takes for you to live um you know, in a good place based on where you are now with your income being generated um, and where you will be, right? So yeah, this is, we're gonna use this. And as I said, this is the overview video, but uh, in the next video, I'm gonna go over, you know, the first box and um, yeah, just build this out. I haven't, you know, done this um, where it's visual like this. So now you can see that uh, our, what I would, use it's a life of riley system right uh but yeah that basically what i've used my whole life to this point uh to simplify some things that are even more complex right so you, you got to think of it like um i like to make things simple and it's not you know to say that um you you shouldn't get like a more you know uh high level education or training but we know of course if you're finance don't destroy this uh thought process when it comes to people people you know want things that are simple for them to get great concepts but e make it easy for them to understand i know earned income i know portfolio income i know passive income and you know i understand to a higher uh level of it passive income is you know basically is income that would continue or be generated uh, if you weren't around right it's income that it continue to generate if you decide to do nothing. Um, and that's just basically what it is uh, for, you know, the purposes of people that are, you know, in an advisory position, right? We know capital gains and other forms of, uh, you know, we, we understand those things, right? And those, <laughs> but when you're talking to the general public, so I'm like, I'm talking to the general public now, I'm talking to members uh, of Trade ATM. I just want you to, you know, not overcomplicate it. Not, you know, whether it's Schedule C, W-2. No, which things um, are you gonna put into these boxes, right? There's like seven income stream types, active, passive income stream. We're gonna talk about that, which box to put it in. And you kind of have an idea now because of what I've already said. Um, diversification, you know, how that applies. Uh, even though in times we say once you master something to diversify like lowers the speed or 
aggressiveness of what you're trying to do. So if you are looking at retirement uh, things, then yeah, you know, diversification is not a bad thing because you're not trying to be like a, a young investor and make a thousand percent of your investment. High risk is not, you know, high risk, high reward shouldn't be the bulk of, you know, your estate or retirement, right? Um, you know, that box. Uh, profit income, earned income, interest income, dividend income, rental income, capital gains income. Where do all these things fit? So yeah, right now, this is the general overview. I'll go through it one last time real quick, right? We're looking at income or wealth. You know, we need cash flow in order to cover uh, bills and expenses and, you know, those kind of things that you have to pay. And if you're getting income on a daily or weekly basis, this really puts you in a more nimble position, right? Lean and nimble, um, which you can grow uh, cash flow, um, whether it's passive or, or otherwise, you can grow that to numbers. There's people on earth that are making millions of dollars passive, but for you or for me, maybe a thousand a month passive is good. Maybe 4,000 a month for some, for others, and maybe 10,000 a month is what would be needed uh, to get you in a place where you can, you know, expand and, and go down the path and, and continue to build into the path of creating generational wealth. If you have family as well as, you know, a, a wonderful, uh, rich retirement, right? Leisure, you know, so, um, everyone has their own, um, ideas or their own thoughts on what they want. You know, I, I, I look at people that try to make people kind of feel bad. Like if they, want an ex a big vehicle a big jeep a big truck they're like yeah be a man you know get a cadillac and you're, you're doing good i'm a big business i'm a boss but you know i look at it different you know maybe i don't maybe me having a million dollars isn't you know the, there's actually stress and certain things that go into certain levels of things right so if you can easily make a hundred thousand you could live under your means you're wealthy right if your cash flow is a hundred thousand and you know, you, depending on where you live on, on earth, where you, where you live, you could live really good versus someone who is in a position where they're in a high stress scenario over and over again for years, but they have more money, right? So even money uh, is personal to each person, what level you need for wealth. Um, but cash flow covering your expenses, Knowing that if you're, um, you know, if you relax for f six months or something happens like, you know, COVID happened and that would have done uh, a lot different to different people's incomes. I lost several uh, cash flow um, projects uh, during that period that just got shut down because uh, the business model needed uh, interaction with um, the public in a certain in a different way that wasn't digital. Right. And so, yeah, but. In general, first box, we put things in there and hopefully we can generate the cash flow to cover our day to day expense, right? Second box, you know, we go with longer term uh, investments that don't really uh, need us to monitor it on a daily basis in the sense that we're not uh, or we are or I am not worried about it. You know, uh, if I buy something at 10,000 at the beginning of the month and it's a monthly thing, if it takes all the way to the end of the month to give a profit of 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever the profit is, that's fine. Right. And so it's just a different investment, you know, and then as far as the estate or retirement level of things, yeah, you know, it's a percentage. So money comes in and literally, you know, we want the money to come in, but we want, um, we want it to be, to pass like, so money comes in, but how does it go? Uh, let me see here. Yeah. So just to make a visual for everything. Yeah. Money comes in and yeah, because this is what it is, it comes in here and then it, we want it to go, you know, once it, we take a percentage and we put it in each of those things. Right. And so if we do that, then, you know, we're able to take a percentage, right. Um, and put it in box number one. 
So if it's 100%, let's say, uh, depending on where I'm at, um, I put 50% in box number one. That's my focus, you know, to be able to increase cash flow. And then I put, uh, you know, let's say 40% or 30% in, uh, you know, my, my bigger business building, like my yearly, monthly business building. And then uh, 50 and 30. So 20% would go into like a long term investments and whatever that is. Now, it could, if it's stocks, then yeah, let's say you know, I'm buying blue chip stocks or I'm buying mid cap companies that I, I plan to hold, you know, <laughs> past my, my death. Or if I'm, even if it's something, let's say like crypto and I'm buying it, but it's, you know, I'm building it up. So if I'm building my, my bag in, let's say Bitcoin, right? Everybody knows Bitcoin. And I'm going to pass that on to my kids, kids, kids. Yeah. 10% of the money that comes in, you know, if I, like I said, if I'm getting a thousand, and uh, I put a hundred dollars in in Bitcoin. I could be doing that, uh, depending on how the cash flow is. If it's a thousand a month cash flow, then yeah. So it'll be a hundred a month would be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. Um, and you might think that's like small, but even such a number, if you look at the time and duration over the last five years, wow, you would have like a really uh, good investment thing. So yeah, just as you look at things and like i said this video is just to give uh people an insight into you know how we simplify the process of taking our money and what we focus on and making sure we get cash flow coming then making sure we have like something we could you know build substantially over time and then that we can retire to something or pass on to someone or you know even give the charity at the end of things and we're able to live a good life because we do it in this way that is the trade atm wealth uh creation um you know process if you will right so we're gonna go into details and uh thank you for checking out this video how to you know look at uh wealth creation when it comes to your investments so you have a better uh, idea of what you want to do and you can get the education that you need in order to accomplish your goals, right? So remember, everyone's supposed to either serve you or if, you know, if they don't serve you, then it doesn't make sense, right? So your accounting, your accountant, or your financial advisor, or your attorney, or your, you know, even your business partners, your, you know, whoever you're working with across the board, when you know and you're clear to have clarity um uh, and and like i said i this literally is so simple for me right because at the beginning of each and every month i have a easy way to just look at things and say okay um if you know the numbers go up let's say i go from a thousand a month income to two thousand a month then without really have to think hard 200 now goes to my long-term estate retirement uh, box and 300 goes you know in my you know business building box if you will right so um and that's just what it is and 500 bucks goes back into you know um growing the cash flow well no it'll be 200 yeah that's what it'll be so we'll uh see you in the next video appreciate you for checking this out hope you can apply um you know, just just apply this to developing your own, you know, sequence and your own process, your own in your ideation process. Hopefully this allows you to have more clarity. That's what it is. I want you to have more clarity about what you're doing. So you're not just bouncing around because a lot of people lose because they bounce around and they're not sure what they're doing. And yes, you could make it really, um, you know, I have people in my family that are accountants and they could be so complicated with numbers. And I'm like, basically, if you own a business or something, you should know percentages, you know, it's simple. And if percentages would be what I just shared with you, thousand in 500 here, 300 here, 200 here, that's what the money is for. You know where it goes. Then within each of these things, you now break down how you're going to use that. And we'll go into that. All right. Uh, like I said, see you on the other side of success. The investor guy.